took your seat. <laughs> Dear friends and family, I invite you to take a moment to quiet your minds and open your hearts as we pray to our God. God of grace and glory, we gather in joyful celebration. We rejoice in the accomplishments and achievements of our graduates today. We mark a moment of wisdom gained and memories made and a new chapter begun. We do not know how the road will unfold before us, but we pray your blessing over our graduates, their families and their friends. For rain or shine, our journey continues, and we rejoice knowing that wherever we go, we go surrounded by your mercy and grace. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Harper McNeely Auditorium in the Miles Center for the Arts on the campus of Davis and Elkins College. It is celebration time at DE. For our graduating seniors, today is the time when all of your hard work, your hopes, and your dreams come to fruition. In a few minutes, I will be privileged to shake your hand and to bestow the diploma to each of our deserving graduates, knowing that each piece of parchment symbolizes so much more than the completion of a course of study. For each of our students, the diploma represents the acknowledgement of an accomplishment as well as the opportunity to pursue dreams. Graduation is not possible without hard work, late night studying, expansion of intellectual horizons and social growth. Graduation is not possible without dedicated faculty that figuratively pour themselves into our students, filling them with knowledge, with curiosity, with confidence. A DE graduate has a bigger picture of our world and a grasp of the complexities of our culture. 
They also graduate with an understanding of our responsibility to God's world and to God's people, as our baccalaureate speaker said so eloquently last night. For the families of our graduates, the diploma represents an accomplishment for you as well. Parents and other family members have sacrificed so that their son or their daughter could experience the transformative education d and &E offers. And in return, parents and family members, you receive an overflowing sense of pride in both the accomplishment and the opportunity for the future that is embodied within your graduate. All of the sacrifice, all the investment is worth it when that young man or young woman whom you love so much walks across this stage, beaming with joy and brimming with yet to be realized life opportunities, crystallized in a moment and in a life, more than two decades of your work, your sacrifice, your nurture becomes the bargain of a lifetime. For Davis and Elkins College and for each of our alumni, the diploma represents and it affirms the mission of this institution and the personal love and dedication that we all share for Davis and Elkins College. In short, this college exists to provide a transformative educational experience and the diploma is the symbol of living out our mission. The tangible sign of success is visible in each d and &E graduate, scattered in communities across this state, across this country, and indeed, across our world. They are making a difference in the lives of people and they are making our world just a bit brighter. Today's commencement activities are a marker along life's journey for all of us connected to this college and particularly for our graduates. Commencement exercises are not the culmination of the journey, rather they are a milestone along the way. The journey that brought these students to the mountains of Randolph County and to this gem of an institution on the hill continues and it will lead them to places and to experiences that hold great promise like the friendships that our students have forged on this campus, there are intriguing, creative, and life-loving people that are waiting for them to be encountered on the journey as our graduates move on from d and &E. They literally have their lives before them, and they are lives that are filled with opportunity, thanks in no small part to their years at Davis and Elkins College. At commencement, we pause to give thanks. And then we move on with hope and with optimism for the journey continues. Before I announce the recipient of an honorary degree, I would be remiss if I did not recognize two very special groups of people who are central to the forward movement of this college. It is my distinct honor and my distinct pleasure to work with an engaged and a passionate board of trustees. We have just concluded two days together discussing, planning, anticipating our future that is built upon the solid foundation of the past 115 years of this college's history. But we know our brightest days are ahead. While some were able or unable rather to remain for commencement activities, several are here this morning and are seated on the stage behind me. And I want to ask the members of our board if they would please stand and please join me in expressing our appreciation for their leadership. As the board sets policy and conducts their fiduciary duty, the day-to-day -day operation of the college falls to the president and to my senior leadership team. Davis and Elkins is blessed and I am grateful to work with this outstanding group of leaders that are seated behind me. 
After I introduce the cabinet of the college, I'm going to ask them to stand, and then I will ask you to please join me in thanking these bold leaders for their service. Our cabinet consists of Dr. Robert Phillips, Vice President for Academic Affairs, Mr. Jamie Joss, Director of Athletics, Mr. Robert Hardman, Vice President for Business and Administration, Dr. Rosemary Thomas, Vice President for Enrollment and Institutional Advancement, and Mr. Scott Goddard, Vice President for Student Life. Now I would like to ask Dr. Phillips, if he would, to please join me at the podium. President Wood, trustees, faculty, students, and honored guests. Colleges and universities confer honorary doctoral degrees to recognize individuals of true distinction, persons whose achievements in the areas of scholarship, service, and leadership bear testament to the values for which these institutions stand. The exemplary lives and achievements of those we so honor provide worthy models for all to emulate. Mr. President, it is my great privilege to present to you Jennifer Giovanetti for the degree Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Ms. Jennifer Giovanetti, you returned to Elkins, your home for 11 years into the campus of Davis and Elkins College today, not as a stranger, but as a distinguished leader, an entrepreneur and a friend to West Virginia. As a 1993 graduate of the University of Pittsburgh with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Planning and Urban Studies, you went on to obtain a Master of Arts in Community and Regional Planning from the University of British Columbia and to be an International Research Fellow in 1995-96 in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. Having previously served as the director of the Elkins Rail Yard Redevelopment Project and serving as chief executive of the Randolph County Economic Development Authority and the West Virginia Wood Technology Center, you were instrumental in the successful redevelopment of the Elkins Rail Yard historic structures while adding tourism infrastructure and public amenities. The project was a model for rural communities redeveloping brownfield sites. In your role leading the county's economic development agency, you were committed to advancing workforce development and supporting the many businesses and local manufacturing operations in the region. Jen, your impressive resume states that upon your departure from Elkins, Ms. Giovanotti led strategic programs and community-based initiatives for seven years at the Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond, most notably in community investment, human capital, regional collaboration, and capital success. She formed the West Virginia Loan Fund Collaboration in 2012 to better understand the impact of small business lending in underserved communities. She has authored a variety of reports, publications, and opinion essays, and has applied her expertise broadly in rural development settings. Ms. Giovanetti is now the president and a trustee of the Claude Worthington Benedum Foundation, a private family foundation founded in 1944 with assets, assets in excess of $380 million. The mission of the Benedum Foundation is to encourage human development in West Virginia and southwestern Pennsylvania through strategically placed charitable resources. Ms. Giovanetti is a member of the Steering Committee for West Virginia Forward, a statewide initiative to advance the state's economy and the Appalachian Funders Network. Throughout her career, she has held leadership positions at the local, state, and regional level with nonprofits, universities, state trade associations, and government planning bodies. Jen describes herself as passionate about community development, innovation, and the power of people. She now lives in Pittsburgh with her husband and with her three children. Today, Davis and Elkins College recognizes you, Jennifer Giovanetti, for your outstanding accomplishments and your continuing service to the people of West Virginia. 
Therefore, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I do hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causia, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto, and I order you to be invested with the hood that is a token of this high honor. Ms. Jennifer Giovanetti, I invite you now to the podium to provide the 2019 commencement address to the graduates of Davis and Elkins College. Well, I've never had to speak with a hood, so excuse me if I fumble a bit here. So I first just want to stand, start off by thanking President and Mrs. Wood for this great honor, thanking the trustees of the college and the faculty and all of those that are part of the Davis and Elkins family that work tirelessly for higher education. Elkins is so near and dear to me. It's a very special place and Davis and Elkins is a very special college. My time living here in Elkins left an indelible mark on me. Like so many of you, and I hope I share this with some of the 2019 graduates, I spent many happy hours sledding on the hills of the college campus, walking my, trying to track down my chocolate lab throughout town who was often found at the Hardee's with biscuits in her mouth, <laughs> uh, having breakfast at Scotty's, having lunch at the rail yard restaurant, listening to live music, and spending so much of my time in the beauty of the Mon Forest. And because of that, this idea that the place of where you live can really influence who you become, I think is very essential to me, and I think it's essential to all of the graduates here today. So I get to be one of the first to congratulate you as you are about to walk up on this stage and accomplish one of the biggest things you will ever do in your life. You've invested in your human capital, and this is a very serious thing in my mind. When I say you, of course I mean you, the 2019 college graduates who have persevered through tough classes and overloaded schedules, Many of you have taken out debt to do this. Some of you are first generation college goers and bravo to that for those of you that have done this courageous thing. Some of you have also traveled here to Elkins from faraway international destinations to better yourselves here, here in Elkins, here in West Virginia, here at Davis and Elkins College. And I also say, this is a human capital investment to all of the friends, family, and the deep support system that it takes all of us to invest in our human capital and to accomplish higher education. I mean, look around all of the people that are here today. It really shows just a great commitment to you graduates. But what you've done here today or what you're about to do not everyone can do and not everybody ever does in their life. Earning a bachelor's degree is huge. In America, only roughly a third of the population above age 25 is able to do what you're about to do. And globally, the numbers are more staggering. It's under about 10% of the people over age 25 that are able to do what you're about to do today. There are a couple of really essential points in a person's life where you build your human capital in a very meaningful way. We know that early childhood is a very important. We know so much about brain development in babies now that early childhood learning is very, very important to building your human capital. We know that in elementary school, mastering reading is a stackable milestone that's essential. And we know that in middle school, 
mastering core math is essential to stacking your human capital. Those are fundamentally important to your human capital. And we know that graduating with a bachelor's degree is huge. It's huge for a couple of reasons. People who earn a bachelor's degree compared to those that do not can expect to have lifelong higher wages and earnings. You can expect to have greater economic mobility. And what I think is most fascinating is that we also know that people that have gone through this experience, particularly at a liberal arts college, of challenging themselves to learn, to think about humanity and broader intellectual accomplishments, build in themselves this type of agility that makes you much more able to withstand anything life might dish up for you. Those are downturns in the economy, those are household shocks that might affect your individual household, and rapid technological changes that we know have been happening and will really be happening in the next 15 to 20 years. You're able to not only endure those successfully, but you're able to seek opportunities and flex with your life to continue to be stable and successful. I've personally experienced this in my own life where I started out working in engineering and I'm ending up in philanthropy. And while those might not seem like they are linear, it's because of what the human capital growth can do for a person to allow you to explore your values and find opportunities that really suit your passion. So the power of a bachelor's degree is so important in my mind, but it should not be taken for granted. You're at a point now where you should be thinking about how do you build your human capital in the future, knowing that you've now hit a major life milestone? And to that I say, every job you take from here on out, if it doesn't have for you leadership and learning, a chance to be inspired, then you should think to yourself, how can I volunteer for the projects that people don't want? take on the work that's too complicated for others, put in a few extra hours to get the job done because you know it's important. Why? Because it will help the world and it will build your human capital. And anywhere you live for the rest of your life, please think of this as an opportunity to volunteer, engage with others, get to know your neighbors, get to know people, really get to know people. Because you'll see over the course of your life how essential those relationships are because you learn from people. You learn from their perspectives, you learn from their disagreements, you learn from their concerns, and it will build your human capital while you're helping the world. One of the most important things about place and taking this opportunity to engage with people is that it takes a while before you can look back on your career and know where some of your most meaningful points have been. And for me, and I thank many of those that are here today, it has been because of my time in Elkins where I had people that were surrounding me that believed in big ideas, were supportive, were kind, and were authentically dedicated to teamwork. So you have so much more already as you leave the ceremony today than most people will ever have. You can really thrive with this degree, you can endure economic shocks and downturns, and you can contribute to the world in a meaningful way that I think we all need. The world definitely needs you, and we have been facing hard challenges throughout history as Reverend Kirby talked about last night, but we also will be facing a lot of tough challenges in the future, and you're the best suited to solve them. So I'd like to end now with a quick story about a young man that was raised in the early 1900s. He was an example of a person that had every advantage invested in his human capital. His name was Claude, 
and he was born to one of the wealthiest men of the time. He was the son of Michael and Sarah Benedum, and Michael Benedum was one of the 100 wealthiest men of his time. Michael Benedum and Sarah Benedum were born and raised in West Virginia around Bridgeport. And with this one and only son of theirs, they invested everything because he was their future like you, 2019 graduates of Davis and Elkins College mean so much to your families. And in 1919, Claude died at the age of 20. He had enlisted in World War I and was just about to launch out on his own in adulthood. And he was a victim of the influenza epidemic that raced through American cities at that time. And so while the founding of the Benedum Foundation has somewhat of a sad story behind it of loss and ambition, what has happened today is we are entering into our 75th year and Claude's legacy has been turned into perpetual giving in a way that allows us to continue to put a lot of philanthropic and charitable investments into people and place because Michael and Sarah Benedum felt that their success and the character that it takes to really be a leader and a philanthropist came from their very special upbringing in West Virginia. And our foundation today is still dedicated predominantly to making those investments in West Virginia. So with that, I'm just so honored to be here today. And I just want to leave you with this idea that you have everything it takes to be agile, creative, giving back to the world in lots of ways, and to just be successful on your own. And one day, I am sure you'll be sitting in an auditorium like this because you have spent your time investing in someone else's human capital. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Giovanetti. It is my distinct honor to introduce Ms. Mr. Bill Nuttall, Chair of the Board of Trustees of Davis and Elkins College. A resident of Chattanooga, Tennessee, Bill received his BS degree from Davis and Elkins College in 1970 and an MA degree from Florida International University in 1975. An avid sports enthusiast, Bill was a professional soccer player, a television and radio soccer color analyst, and a sports and marketing executive before his retirement. Bill has served on the DE board since 2011, and he was elected chair of the board in March of 2018, and I might add, re elected just yesterday to a second uh, two year term, assuming this leadership role uh, initially in July of 2018. Please welcome Chair Bill Nuttall to the podium. Thank you, President Wood. As he mentioned earlier, today is a marker in your life, and what a great experience. To the families and to the parents and loved ones and all those that came today, today, treasure today. This day will never happen again. This is one day in your life that you should treasure and always remember it. You'll have other times, but this is a great opportunity to just treasure today. At our meeting, the Board of Trustees approved an honorary degree that has just been conferred. Those graduating will see their diplomas. It was upon the recommendation of the faculty and the president that the trustees approve the granting of your degrees. Be assured that our care for and interest in you and the college goes far beyond the approving what others recommend. Members of the board feel very much like partners in what you have done here day in and day out. We too receive the presidents reflecting along the journey, columns so that you're able to follow the events and activities of the campus. But our real concern is for each of you as individuals, as members of the D&E family. On behalf of the board, I want to commend the faculty for having as their priority the teaching and learning of their students and for nurturing them to have the chance at becoming men and women that might never have dreamed possible. 
for preparing and inspiring them for success and for thoughtful engagement in the world. Thank you, faculty. To those of you graduating, the Board of Trustees would like to thank you for choosing to spend your formative years with us on this hilltop. We commend you for sticking with it, even when you may have been tempted to turn back. And I know none of you ever thought about that. Finally, my fellow trustees, and I want to thank the families of the class of 2019 for staying with them on the dark days as well as the bright. We commend you for your abiding faith and confidence in their potential and in the almost unlimited possibilities that lie ahead as a result of their time here. Congratulations to all of our graduates. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. At the annual Honors Convocation held in this auditorium a month ago, we recognized the academic and student life achievements of students from across the campus. The students so honored have shaped the intellectual and social character of Davis and Elkins College in a variety of powerful and positive ways. As tradition has it, however, we wait for commencement, the completion of all coursework, and the calculation of final grade point averages to determine the final two academic achievement awards of the year. The first award is for our salutatorian. The salutatorian is the graduating senior with the second highest grade point average of his or her graduating class. The salutatorian of the Davis and Elkins College class of 2019 is Kendall Noel Taylor, graduating with a Bachelor of Arts degree in elementary education. Kendall will now offer her remarks as the salutatorian. Welcome, fellow graduates and family, faculty, and distinguished guests. Today is a huge milestone in our lives that marks the beginning of many new adventures and endeavors. Every graduate represented here today has a unique story of their path to Davis and Elkins College and their years spent obtaining their degree. But I know that we all share one common thread. That is that the past year's studying and living in the beautiful community and college enveloped by the majestic mountains has done nothing less than prepare us to conquer what lies ahead joyfully. I am so honored to be standing here as the class of 2019 salutatorian. I do not take this honor lightly, and I feel so blessed to have been a student at Davis and Elkins College. As I mentioned above, there are many unique stories represented within the many faces of graduates here today. Some left their homes from other countries, states, and towns to pursue their education here and some, like myself, took advantage of the fantastic school located in their hometown to receive a quality education. My decision to attend Davis and Elkins took much faith and prayerful planning as I took time off from working to better myself for my family. As a mother of two small babies, now three and six, and a wife of eight years this coming July, much was taken into careful consideration for me to step out and pursue my degree in education. 
When my husband and I first pulled up onto the campus, every connection we made from admissions to the education department felt right. That leads me to the many thank yous that I must express because without these people, I would not be standing here today. First, thank you to the various departments represented within our college that work so hard to make sure that every single student enrolled here experiences success. I must especially highlight Stephanie Haynes and the Registrar's Office in my gratitude. My situation, bringing in credits and figuring out what would work for me and making me a roadmap to, to follow is so appreciated. You have always greeted me with joy, whether in person or through email, ready to help and have made the planning side, which could become a headache quickly, a breeze. Next, I must thank the education department. I came in knowing that becoming an educator was the end goal, but because of this department, you have instilled in me more than the academic language and theories needed to score a job but a passion and confidence that I am capable of being an extraordinary teacher. Thank you, Desiree Carlisle, for keeping all the education students up to date with certifications, deadlines, and answering the call for whatever the need was, again, with great joy. To Dr. Tessar, thank you for mentoring me and molding me into the educator that I now can say that I am. You so carefully created every single assignment with purpose, went out of your way to explain, help, and listen to your students, and have set the example before us of what an excellent educator is. Dr. Carr, thank you for being my cheerleader. From the first day meeting you, without even knowing my family or me, you looked me in the eye and said, you can do this and being a mother and wife is not going to hurt you, but instead help you. You turn the anxiety of going back to school and maintaining a family into the driving force to succeed. Although Professor Sams is part of the math department, I must include him in my appreciation to the education department. You have been an instrumental part in my success here at d &E as well. My time in your math classes prepared me to create quality math experiences in the school as I have during student teaching, so much so that I was eager to center my capstone around finding the fun in fractions. <laughs> yes, I just said fun in fractions in the same sentence. <laughs> the nurture and care from this department are unheard of, special, and not recognized enough. So thank you, Education Department for creating future educators that will all be joyful difference makers, no matter where they land. My final thank you is to my amazing family, to my husband, John. Thank you for saying yes without hesitation when I came to you with the idea of becoming an educator. Thank you for the countless hours spent taking care of the kids cooking for me, and helping keep the house in order so that I could to keep me going. I could not have done this without you. And to my sweet Raylan and Braxton, may you always know that you can made that will last a lifetime, as I have found my lifelong friend on this journey, Alice Wagler. You will take with you the joy of the relationships between you and your gifted professors and all the other elements that have made this journey unique and unforgettable for you. My challenge to you is to keep that joy with you and spread it wherever you go. Stay joyful, knowing that the experience you have had here may be closing, but that you will always have the joy of d &E in your heart. Best of luck, graduates. Thank you very much, Kendall. The second award is the Freeman J. Daniels Academic Achievement Award. 
This award honors an alumnus of the class of 1922 and one of the college's most distinguished graduates. The Freeman J. Daniels Academic Achievement Award recognizes the graduating senior with the highest grade point average of his or her, val of his or her graduating class, the valedictorian. This year's valedictorian is graduating with a Bachelor of Arts degree in art. Please join me in welcoming the valedictorian of the Davis and Elkins College Class of 2019, Nicholas Nijang Altman. Okay. Greetings, Earthlings. I come in peace. <laughs> I'm going to keep this short and sweet. I'd like to tell a story about a man named Charles H. Hawley. Charles was a singer-songwriter out of Lubbock, Texas. He wrote and recorded a lot of songs with his band, which eventually achieved international fame. It was the winter of 1959, and Charles and his band were on tour. The band was upset about how uncomfortable and cold the tour buses were, so Charles decided to charter a flight to their next destination for himself and two other band members. The plane crashed about five miles away from the runway due to inclement weather, and there were no survivors. Charles was 22. Many of you would know of Charles through a different name, Buddy Holly. His legacy has influenced many others in his field, such as John and Paul of the Beatles, Mick Jagger of the Rolling Stones, as well as Elton John and The Clash. Graduating class of 2019, we only have one life. No matter what you believe, this is it. This is real life. In our society, death is feared. Humans try to avoid death at all costs. Most other living creatures are born, reproduce, do what instinct tells them as to survive, and then die. Humans, on the other hand, are unique in this sense. We are born without an innate instinct. Instead, we have free will. We are taught what we know and what we think about the plethora of choices we have. As society has evolved, humans have been taught how to avoid death instead of figuring it out on their own. Without having to worry about mortality, our minds are on what is right or what is wrong, basing our versions of truth on our belief systems and the environments around us. These choices we make can determine whether we leave a good or bad spirit on this earth. In this case, a spirit is a way that you are remembered, your legacy. It is your turn to make a decision. You now have the opportunity to make a mark that outlives your own mortality. You can leave a bad spirit, or you could improve and make an impact with a good spirit. Decisions come in all shapes and sizes. They can perpetuate hate and violence, or they can bring peace and love. It helps to think about the bigger picture. Don't let somebody else define you. Don't get sucked into dogma. Live life according to your own plans. Ask questions, search for answers, define yourself as an individual. What works for others might not be the same solution for you. Be your own shepherd and guide yourself along the path of experience. We're here now, make it count, define your legacy. Thank you, Nick. 
I would like to invite Mr. Scott Goddard, Vice President for Student Affairs, to come forward to read the names of students receiving their diplomas today. Would the candidates for the Associate in Art and Associate in Science degrees please stand? President Wood, I have the honor of presenting to you the candidates for the degrees of Associate in Art and Associate in Science. These, these students have met all the requirements for their degree and have been approved by the faculty and the Board of Trustees to receive their diplomas. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Davis and Elkins College and by the State of West Virginia, I now confer upon you the degrees of Associate in Arts and Associate in Science with all of the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. On behalf of the entire college community, I wish you God's richest blessings. Would you now come forward to receive your diplomas? The candidates for the degree of Associate in Art and Associate in Science are led by Leela Ann Densmore, the highest ranking candidate for the Associate degree, who will receive a scroll symbolizing this honor. Receiving the Associate in Science degree in symbolic scroll is Leela Ann Densmore, highest ranking associate degree, highest honors. <laughs> Students receiving the Associate in Arts degree are Caitlin Elizabeth Cole. Caleb Joshua Enriquez. <laughs> Chelsea Renee Lambert. Alexis Morgan Smith. <laughs> Brenda Lee Tace. Students receiving the Associate in Science degree are Aaron Elaine Beer. <laughs> Jonathan Paul Bogus. Mariah Lindsay Boley. <laughs> Alyssa May Gail Buttram. Caitlin Elizabeth Cole. <laughs> Mariah Cynthia Davis. <laughs> Katrina May Fowler.
Carey, Virginia Fry. Kristen Ray Hedrick. <laughs> Elise McKenna Joe. Her mother, Lisa Reed, will present Elise with her diploma. Catherine Nicole Keith. <laughs> Zandra Jade Kelly, honors. <laughs> Courtney Dawn Leg. Tesla Marie Lewis. <laughs> Lindsay Rose Marks. Kayla Sue Masters. <laughs> Marlena Catherine Pennington. Aladega, Charletta Pennington. <laughs> Jenna Lee Richmond, high honors. Preston Sego, high honors. <laughs> John Tasia Don Sitton. Matea Brooklyn Taylor. Stormy Joe Truxel. Camelia Paige Walmsley. Samuel Alexander Wyndham. Would the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts please stand? <laughs> President Wood, I have the honor of presenting to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. 
These students have met all the requirements for their degrees and have been approved by the faculty and the Board of Trustees to receive their diplomas. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Davis and Elkins College and by the State of West Virginia, I now confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts with all of the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. On behalf of the entire college community, I wish you God's richest blessings. Would you please come forward to receive your diplomas? The candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts are led by Nicholas Nijeng Altman, the highest ranking candidate for the Bachelor of Arts degree, who will receive a scroll symbolizing this honor. Receiving the Bachelor of Arts degree in symbolic scroll is Nicholas Nijang Altman, highest ranking Bachelor of Arts degree, valedictorian, Freeman J. Daniels recipient, summa cum laude. Additional students receiving the Bachelor of Arts degree are Emily Nicole Adams. <laughs> Ferris Mosfer Alzwari. Abdul Rahman Muhammad Agadayan. <laughs> Jessica Desiree Anderson. Cordell Lee Bostick. <laughs> Lauren Denise Kane, cum laude. <laughs> Caitlin Elizabeth Cole. Caleb Joshua Enriquez. <laughs> Marcy Kathleen Gilbert. Eric Francis Gordon. Yeah. Alyssa Ann Jacobs, cum laude. Kayla Sierra James. <laughs> Brittany Nicole Johnston. Zandra Jade Kelly, cum laude. <laughs> Vanessa, 
Victoria Rochelle Kyle. <laughs> Brian Russell LaFollette. Armand Lacani. <laughs> Chelsea Renee Lambert. Haley Don Lloyd, cum laude. <laughs> Shannon Marie McClure. Carmen Rose Lynn McTaggart. <laughs> Caduce Mancare Michael. Whitney Marie Miner. <laughs> Charisse Renee Mitchell. Laura Marie Mullinex. <laughs> Christopher Lucas Norcross. Dakota Carpenter Peak, cum laude. <laughs> Rachel Morgan Pearlstein. Shelby Lynn Pemberton. <laughs> Jamie Donnell Perrin, cum laude. <laughs> Joshua Aaron Rankin. Do Joshua, Aaron Rankin one more time. <laughs> Bailey Dawn Rhodes, magna cum laude. Allison Brooke Riley, cum laude. <laughs> Eleanor May Rossiter, magna cum laude.
Misty Dawn Roll. Kyle Preston Sego, magna cum laude. Autumn Marie Shreve. Alexis Morgan Smith. <laughs> Alyssa Marie Snyder. Aaron Robert Striner. <laughs> Kendall Noel Taylor, summa cum laude. Joshua Scott Thompson. <laughs> Alice Elizabeth Wegler, magna cum laude. Felicity Dawn Wallace. <laughs> Tanisha Makiba Washington. Sarah Ann Wyford. <laughs> Matthew Gabriel Weintraub, cum laude. Anna Marie Whitcomb, cum laude. <laughs> Kaylee Dawn Wilburn. Dustin Lee Williams. Cassandra Jamie Williams, magna cum laude. Marshall Blake Williams. <laughs> Haley Brianna Wiseman.
Would the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science please stand? President Wood, I have the honor of presenting to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science. These students have met all the requirements for their degrees and have been approved by the faculty and the Board of Trustees to receive their diplomas. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Davis and Elkins College and by the State of West Virginia, I now confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Science with all of the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. On behalf of the entire college community, I wish you God's richest blessings. Would you now come forward to receive your diplomas? The candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science are led by Tessa Ray Stewart, the highest ranking candidate for the Bachelor of Science degree, who will receive a scroll symbolizing this honor. Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree in symbolic scroll is Tessa Ray Stewart, highest ranking Bachelor of Science degree, summa cum laude. <laughs> Additional students receiving the Bachelor of Science degree are Bailey Jordan Ob, magna cum laude. Jade Satsuki Ali. <laughs> Thomas Hunter Allen. Nicole Elaine Armstrong, cum laude. <laughs> Jeremy Lawrence Ayers. Monty David Burr. <laughs> Alyssa Marie Cairns. Caitlin Nicole Cobb. <laughs> Carlos Cruz Dominguez. Ashley Lynn Cunningham. <laughs> Laura Claire Dean, cum laude. Taylor Noel Drum, magna cum laude. <laughs> 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 
Holly Lynn Feather, cum laude. <laughs> Tobias Monty Gibbons, magna cum laude. <laughs> Jack Gibson. Silas Parker Chase Gibson. <laughs> Caitlin Marie Giffen. Angelia Ruby Goodwin. <laughs> Morgan Alicia Graham. Hannah Victoria Hannafin. <laughs> Brittany Denise Hannah. Lauren Marie Hill. <laughs> Brianna Elise Huffman, magna cum laude. Chandler Hot, cum laude. <laughs> Jocelyn Renee Humpy. Casey Carla Johnson. <laughs> Danielle Marie Johnson. Don Kimball. <laughs> Ian Fernando Lashley. Caitlin Brooke Manson. <laughs> ben Jordan Marshall.
Whitney B. Mele, Magna, Magna Cum Laude. Emily Rochelle Morgan, Cum Laude. Ian Alexander Nelson. Edmund Emmanuel Parker. Sean Michael Pass. Frederick Alexander Peter, magna cum laude. Heather Caitlin Phillips. Logan Allen Phillips, magna cum laude. Brandon Lee Plummer. Nicholas Rosh Haglin, magna cum laude. <laughs> Jennifer Lee Ridgway, summa cum laude. <laughs> Kelsey Yvonne Roby. Alex Laser Samarzic. <laughs> Mason Lee Schoonover. Kaylee Lane Sherrard. <laughs> Christopher Kirk Silva. Alexa Nicole Smara. <laughs> Mackenzie Diane Smith, magna cum laude. Allison Louise Snodderly. <laughs> Brenda Lee Tace.
Sarah Elizabeth Tobin. Brandy Renee Tomey. <laughs> Rochelle Dawn Wilson. President Wood, all other students whose names appear in today's program are graduating in absentia. Would the graduates please rise? <laughs> President Wood, I have the honor of presenting to you and to this assembly the Davidson Elkins College graduating class of 2019. The crowd was so enthusiastic there, the graduates have one final task. They must move their tassels now to the left, which signifies their, grad their graduating status.
Thank you so much, choir. That was beautiful. On behalf of the National Alumni Council and the entire Alumni Association, I offer congratulations on a job well done. We are so very proud of you and your accomplishments. As you leave d &E to begin your new adventures, I want you to remember just a few things. First of all, you are a d and &E senator forever. Yes. Wear your d &E clothes and all your swag. You will be very surprised to find how much you have in common with someone just during a chance meeting. Second, stay in touch. Let us know where you are, what's going on in your lives, new jobs, achievements, marriages, babies. We truly delight in celebrating these moments with you. And with your permission, we'll share your good news in the Forward magazine. Next, join the d and &E Fund. We have several alumni chapters in different states that plan gatherings all the time. The website is a great place to see what's going on in your part of the world. And it is at this time I want to invite you to your very first homecoming as an alumni. You will be getting more information on this time as, draw, as time draws near. But I do really hope that you're able to join us, so be sure to save the date, Homecoming 2019, September 20th through the 21st. Again, congratulations, best wishes. You did it. And may God bless you in all that you do. Wendy came this close to making it through without crying. <laughs> <laughs> Class of 2019, I have one more task for you before we conclude this commencement ceremony. You just received a raucous and well-deserved ovation from this entire crowd. I'm gonna ask our 2019 graduates, would you please rise? Seated behind me on the stage are a group of people that have made this day possible. They have literally poured into you their wisdom and knowledge, and it's because of that that you stand here today to graduate. As you're standing, I'm wondering if you wouldn't like to give the faculty of Davis and Elkins College a standing ovation. And if you'll stay standing, there's one other group here that I want to give you a chance to express your appreciation to, because quite frankly, if it weren't for them, you wouldn't be here either. And that is your moms, your dads, and your family. Let them hear it. Congratulations, graduates. Let me ask all of you, would you please stand as Reverend Brecky Wagner comes for our benediction? Oh, 
dear friends, we have made it. And some of you will be traveling far, traveling back to homes that will leave behind these West Virginia mountains. Some of you will return to Great Britain or España or Deutschland. Some of you might stay in Buchanan or Elkins. But wherever you go, wherever you make your home, wherever you journey, know that this place, these memories, and this family is here for you always always. And so, my dear graduates, hear now the final blessing. Go now in peace, go now in peace, may the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you Amen. Thank uh -huh.